almighty and ever-living God, you have given us a new revelation of our loving providence in the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, to be born of the Virgin Mary. Grant that as he shared our mortality, so we may share his eternity in the glory of your kingdom, where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. you and also with you let us pray O oh God you have caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light grant that we who have known the mystery of that light on earth may also enjoy him perfectly in heaven where with you and the Holy Spirit he lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah said with the spirit of all our Sunday school children of St. John's of Laddingtown. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns, listen. Your sentinels lift up their voices. Together they sing for joy, for in plain sight they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm. 
before the eyes of all the nations and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, into the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. 
and Merry Christmas to Merry each Christmas. and every one of you. This is great. So glad to have you with us. So boys and girls and uh, parents and those that are gathered, I want to tell you um, a story. Tell you a story uh, that took place in January of 2000. And I was uh, very fortunate in this story to uh, take advantage of one of the greatest, uh, really, trips that anyone could imagine uh, in a lifetime. I traveled to the Holy Land. And for almost two weeks, uh, I joined a group of people from uh, all over the world who had uh, also traveled to be there in the Holy Land, and we were studying at uh, St. George's College and uh, Cathedral in Jerusalem. St. George's is uh, the uh, epicenter, if you will, the, of where all things Anglican uh, take place in the Holy Land. I, I'd love for you to, to Google that later and, and check them out, St. George's, Jerusalem. So we were there. And uh, as the story goes, it was a uh, pretty chilly uh, January uh, morning, and I was uh, excited to be with uh, this group of, of pilgrims traveling, as I say, to, uh, to the Holy Land. And we were headed down to Bethlehem. And uh, as some of you may know, Bethlehem is really only about a short distance of seven miles uh, south of, of Jerusalem. And we arrived on, if you have the picture of the, the classic tour bus, right, pulling, pulling up uh, after, you know, finding our way down there. Uh, we pulled up uh, to what's known as Manger Square. And so we were asked by our uh, Palestinian uh, guides to, to quickly uh, move along uh, the way. This, there was a long stretch of, of, of street vendors and, and tourist shop, and uh, they of course, they had a task they wanted us to, to move on to. Uh, the focus for the day was the Church of the Nativity. And I should say, just sort of an aside, is that uh, Manger Square in and of itself uh, was uh, rather disappointing for me. I had high expectations, and it was not very well maintained. And frankly, uh, for a few moments, it, it felt um, unsafe. So, uh, someone in our group uh, sort of shouted out and, and said, oh my goodness, I, I think I heard some gunshots in the distance. And I thought to myself, okay, um, this is gonna be one heck of a way for people to remember me. <laughs> it, it was a little dicey there. Anyways, we moved, moved along. We uh, arrived at the uh, unscathed, everything, nothing happened. So anyway, we moved along to the historic Basilica of the Nativity, which today is run by this uh, fascinating uh, power play, if you will, arrangement between uh, the Greeks, the Russians, the Ar Armenians, and the Roman Catholics. And it is frankly a mystery to me only known to God as to how in the world all of that group can organize themselves and manage and lead one of the greatest spots on earth, the Church of the Nativity. But they do, and it runs quite well. I, I told a friend of mine the other day, it gives Americans great hope for the Republicans and Democrats to finally work together if the Armenians and Russians and Greeks and Germans and, and you know, Roman Catholics can do it, then we can do it too. That's another sermon for another day. Anyway, well, the, the facts of the matter is there had been a, a church on this spot where we were arriving that day, where, where Jesus was born, since the fourth century. And that really brought it into focus for me. Of course, the story and then the history of, of where we were. And so then, reflecting on it now after all these years, I think there are two things which uh, should challenge um, pilgrims as they visit. And I hope you will, too, regardless of my scare, of major square for you. But I hope that you will have the opportunity, too, to visit. The, this is the oldest church in all of the Holy Land. Of course, it needs repairs, but that's not the point. The, what I found the, the challenge for the Church of the Basilica of the Nativity is 
the main entrance. So the main entrance is literally, um, you are forced to enter a doorway that is like five foot high. And in our group, we were like, we have to go through, <laughs> through there. Now, how is that? It's called the door of humility. So the Byzantine Emperor Justinian in the sixth century built this wall, this church, this entrance in the sixth century. And the reason why he built it with the five foot wall is on purpose for Christians to bow down in humility as you approach God. And I thought that was, that was pretty cool. I got it. I kind of bumped my bald head a little bit, but I, you know, I got through just fine. The second challenge is even more obvious. The, the, the place is absolutely uh, packed with people. It is an introvert's nightmare. I'll just tell you that. In, in some ways, it's even worse than uh, Times Square, Jenny. It, it, it's, it, it's, it's, people are everywhere. Every language, everything going on. But it, it, it's chaos, but it, it's a good chaos. It is. Just bear with me. So eventually I made my, made my way down into the crypt. If you can imagine, this was the church on the sides. You enter into underneath the church, and there's this amazing crypt, you know, for, for all of these years there. And this is the place where uh, Constantine and his mother, Helena, have convinced us as Christians to believe that, that Mary was born exactly in this spot, this very spot. And it is, of course, marked in Latin by a beautiful 14 points star, which total to decide here, if you, if you read the story, the Armenians stole one year <laughs> from the Greeks and the Catholics that eventually got it back. But anyway, there's all kinds of, of lore. But it's a beautiful place. You, you, you make yourself there, and there it is, even amongst all the noise. So moving as all of this was, and to see this, the star of Bethlehem, what I'll never forget was this, is that sitting there on the floor, right next to this place where this, the star marks the birthplace of Jesus, was an old, old Palestinian Christian man. And I have to tell you, he had the most... Um, loving and welcoming face, uh, the eyes, particularly, uh, I remember, more so than anyone I think I've ever seen. It, it was, I kid you not, it was as if there was Jesus sitting right there, right out of central casting. This guy was amazing. And I would later learn that he has been doing that for over years of coming every single day. But it was in his hands, though, too, besides the appearance, in his hand, this is what really struck me, is that there was a simple sign that he would hold day in and day out for all of those, literally, probably millions of people. And it, in Arabic, the translator told us it read, Allah Yahabok. My apologies to my Arabic speakers. Allah Yahabok meaning God loves you. God loves you was on this man's sign. He's not begging, absolutely no money baskets anywhere. But apparently in the Arabic, this phrase is a very informal greeting to close friends. And it simply means welcome. And isn't that exactly what tonight is all about, is welcome. Welcome to new life. God welcomes us to the manger tonight so that we can literally see for ourselves with our own eyes that, that it is God's welcome which greets us and gives us this new life, this new life which is unconditional love. The loving message of God's angels makes it clear. Jesus is the purest. Jesus is the, the kindest love that we will ever know. 
And so Christian, Christmas in this context really is uh, a love story, isn't it? For thousands of years, God has revealed his love for us in both story and action. In story, right from the very beginning, Genesis chapter 1, love began at creation. God saw everything. God saw everything that God made, and it was good. Not only good, but very good. In action, it comes to us because every human being is loved into life with the very breath of God. Therefore, God's sole source for our lives is rooted entirely in grace. That's the best Christmas gift that you'll ever receive. And I'll promise you this, it won't come in a tiny Robin's egg blue colored box either. <laughs> Nevertheless, throughout the Hebrew Bible, God expresses love to us by many examples, tons of them. And apparently this wasn't enough because God sends a direct message. Wanted to get that in there. I think that's a, that's a cool image. That God is sending a direct message to us. Whether it's social media that we use today or through Hebrew scripture. And the message is that once that love is possible and that it has been known to us, it comes to us in this most fragile and vulnerable of packages. And the message comes through life of a newborn child. God's divine word literally becomes flesh and lives among us. Emmanuel, God is with us. Tonight at this very moment, at this very moment here, in our little corner of the world, God is here in the moment. Emmanuel's love is with us. Emmanuel's love is with our military. Our military men and women who are serving Overseas, on the seas, in danger, wherever they may be, God is with them. Emmanuel. Emmanuel love stands with those who feel anxious and sits right beside the elderly woman in her nursing home room. God is there. Emmanuel's love is especially with all our courageous nurses and doctors, clearly, right. As we journey to Bethlehem, now confident of, of what is this night is being revealed to us, confident of this loving presence ever present with us, let us join with Christians now around the world and give thanks for this silent and holy night. Because away in the manger, away in the manger but yet close in the manger to us too lies the little Lord Jesus, close by us forever, and loves us, we pray. Bless all the dear children in thy tender care, and fit us for heaven to live with thee there. Merry Christmas.
The prayers of the people. On this holy night, we pray for peace throughout the world. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for St. John's Church and this community. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Joseph, our president, Kathy, our governor, Robert, our mayor, and all who govern and hold positions of authority in the nations of the world. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all God's creation that we may be faithful stewards of it. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are sick, suffering, or in any adversity. Lord, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the many blessings of this life, and especially those we love. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died. Let light perpetual shine upon them. Let us now pray for our own needs and those of others, silently or aloud. O God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. All right, peace, Mocha. Merry Christmas. All right. Good job. Peace, Chief. How are you holding up over there? You got it. All right. Merry Christmas. Peace, Larry. Nina, girl. Peace of the Lord. Oh, good. I got it. Peace of the Lord. Peace be with you. Peace. I don't know how to do this anymore. Here we go. We're trying to figure that out. Peace be with you. Merry Christmas, guys. Peace. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Peace be with you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Double two. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Teddy. Yeah. Peace, guys. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, guys. I'm so glad. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Peace. I'm loving that mass too. I'm with you. Merry Christmas. We got it. Merry Christmas, everyone. Peace. Peace. Excellent. Please be seated. So welcome once once again to each and of you here to a very warm welcome. For those that are joining us too uh, on Facebook, on the YouTube Live through our website, we're so glad that you're joining us, particularly this year. Some of you that can't be in person here, we're thrilled that you're joining us here, whether here or, or maybe possibly around the world too. And it can't be a, a better sign that the Holy Spirit is, is alive and, and working when you wake up on a Christmas Eve morning and there's like a dusting of, of snow out there, you know, and I think that's, that's definitely a good sign, you know, we're, I like dustings of snow too, but as an Alabama boy would say there, no, no feet of snow, but that's, and you'll notice too, if you have your order of service, that on the cover, uh, <laughs> that was not shot from this morning, obviously, that was a, a, one of our big snows in Long Island, beautiful uh, January day, I believe, that uh, Courtney Callahan, our wonderful uh, photojournalist, uh, took that for us to Courtney. Thank, thank you so much for the helping there, too, and for each of you that um, miss, miss, but you got to hear Miss Courtney's voice today, too. I think that, that really helped, because I know th those that you were looking forward to the Christmas pageant, um, and Courtney, thank you for the lead up, for, for all of the, the casting and the work, and for each of you as, as family. 
uh, the volunteers, and uh, for Mr. B and everyone that, that next year we're going to give it our best shot once again. I'm, I'm very sorry we, we couldn't, but I, I'm grateful to each of you too, though, for the work. Um, I know too that for uh, those of you, back just for a second, that are watching, I know the Astons uh, are watching today too, the Dilgar Clarks, Donna George, and a few others that, that spoke to me in the this week too, uh, so particularly to each of you, I hope, hope that you're well. You know, in this church, each and uh, every Christmas now, this is my seventh with you, it, it seems to me it, it's just a, a magical place to be, isn't it? Uh, maybe some of you that are joining for the first time or seeing, but uh, St. John's in Chris, on Christmas Eve is at its best, and I, I want to thank each of, of the, uh, the volunteers, our, our altar guild, that has worked so hard to, to make that happen. You know, Mother Catherine and I team up with uh, tremendous staff. We mentioned Courtney here and, and Mr. B with the choir. And uh, Kyla's here with us too, is, uh, is one of our choral scholars. And I know Danielle is, is not feeling well. So Danielle, if you're watching too, thank you for the good work that you've been doing. And uh, Mr. Frank Powers and uh, Deshaun Cofield are helping us this year so much with the, our buildings. And uh, then two, our, our, speaking of Marys, our, our two Marys, Mary Saban is our parish administrator and Mary Syracuse too. Um, I think um, to each and every one of them join with our, our wardens and our vestry to say St. John's has a great leadership team here, and I'm very grateful to be part of it. I'd like to give them a nice round of applause to all, all of those that have been. So let's see, the um, couple of little uh, footnotes for you to know too, that uh, tonight's collection is, is a little different since the ushers are not able to pass the plates, but if you still have your order of service, if you'll turn in your order of service, which is a, a beautiful program, to, to page 12, and uh, it's a simple and easy way to support the church, both today and, and literally throughout out the year. There's a, a, a CR code there, a Venmo, and then a couple other options of a way to, to, to really to give back, to support. The, the ministry of our church is, is very simple. It, it's children that you have here to children and families. Our wonderful music tradition and the outreach that so many of you in this room have contributed to through, through the year. That's, those are the, the three-legged stool, and that's absolutely the best way to do that. Page 12 will give you that information. Finally, too, if um, we invite you to come forward for communion, if you haven't received communion in a while in these COVID days, on page 10 of your order service, there's some detailed instructions there of how to do that. Mother Catherine is our celebrant today, and she'll be right here and in the center for you to receive in one kind the bread. And uh, do feel, feel welcome to do to do that and to receive, if you certainly receive in your tradition. I hope, boys and girls that are here too, um, that your Christmas will be uh, one that, that meets everyone's you know, hopes and dreams, and that is for good health and for the love that you have uh, for those that are holding you literally right now and those uh, maybe that are in heaven that we see no longer. We give thanks in this country uh, to be free to practice our religion and have uh, a sense of the goodness of Jesus Christ and we, we celebrate that tonight with you. That's the greatest gift of all. I wish you a very, very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Our service continues with the great thanksgiving, beginning on page eight of your order of service. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give you thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we, we remember, remember his death, we, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and the blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Joseph, blessed John, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power of the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
service continues with Silent Night, found on page 10 of your bulletins, and you are invited to stand. Our post-communion prayer is found on page 10 of your bulletins. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, may Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with his joy and peace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this night and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go forth in the name of the incarnate Christ. Thanks be to God. It's it's a different world.
is alive and breathing. You just have Santa's good to everybody here. Now. Absolutely. <laughs> Always good. Merry Christmas to you. Thank you so much. Merry Christmas, guys. Absolutely. Have a, have a great. I don't think we have much snow tomorrow, so I think we're okay. It's good. You know, good to see you. Yes. Thank you so much. I'm so excited about Santa Claus, man. I am ready. And it's perfect it's a perfect night to fly, right? So, nice and clear. That was so neat, wasn't it? Just a little dusting. Merry Christmas. Thank, thank you. I think he's going to need Rudolph because he's got your pants, man. It's all good. You got it. Thank you, Carl. It, that's the best, isn't it? Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much. God has already blessed you all here, so... Look forward to, to more blessings through the year, too. That's right. Thank you so much. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas, Kat. Merry Christmas to you. Love your family. Every one of you guys are the best. Scott, Merry Christmas, man. Your mom and dad and everybody. Thank you, guys. I know I could give everybody a hug. I, I, I just, I don't want to. Thank you, guys, so much, though. I appreciate it. Yeah. I don't know, you know, I, um, I'm about the whole, because, you know, Baylor's my team. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and Ole Miss, I'm worried they're going to, like, roll them, you know. Yeah, but yeah. I don't know. That's what he's telling me, man. He's got Alabama by two touchdowns, right? Man, I've got to know what the points are, too. He's, he's into it. He's into it. But see, Cincinnati's going to be in the Big 12 next year, yeah. and they've had a great recruiting. I hope they do well. How about that crazy uh, Central Florida and Florida game? That was crazy. Just no bunch of thugs yeah. out there, right? You don't need to recruit people. You know.